Hey everyone. Okay. So I know that you want to know, um, just like so many parents, when can I start finding out if my child has dyslexia, a learning disability, ADHD, autism, and so forth. So I do want to start off saying with certain disorders or differences, there is no, um, you know, it, de it does depend on the you know, what it is, if, if we're looking for ADHD versus dyslexia and so forth. However, um, for most of these conditions, we can actually determine and screen by five years old, oftentimes even sooner, right? Like even ASD now, autism spectrum, we can determine a lot of that sooner because what we're looking for are signs of brain disorganization and the risk factors and all of that, um, you know, that, that shows up at a very young age. So I want to jump and talk about dyslexia first, because that's a huge one and really, really concerning because, you know, the research shows that if these kids get to grade four and they still have not, um, you know, been flagged, I don't want to even say get a diagnosis because sometimes I work with lots of parents who don't even get a diagnosis, but they have, you know, they're on it. Like at four years old, they're like, I know something's up. I want to address it right away. I don't care what a diagnosis. Let's do whatever we need to do, right? So basically, whatever you want to call it, these things like dyslexia are diagnosable at the age five and a half years old. And that's as per the, you know, leading research in the world, such as headed, you know, spearheaded by Dr. Sally Shaywitz, who's out of Harvard and so forth, a uh, specialist in literacy and learning disorders, uh, reading based learning disabilities and so forth. So the thing is, is that keep in mind, you know, long before your child gets the diagnosis, let me know if you're that parent where you knew all along, um, you know, that your child had this disorder or disability or whatever you want to call it. And then finally you get this diagnosis and you're not surprised. And the reason you're not surprised is because it's not just your mama's intuition. It's because the signs are all there because the signs are there at a young age. And unfortunately, the biggest, most concerning thing that is happening in the education system, even in the medical system, but particularly the education system, which I'll get into the reasons why in a minute, our parents are told it's too early to tell. They're told, no, we're too early to tell. We're just going to wait. Um, you know, let's just focus on practice. Um, if you have concerns about ADHD or something else like ASD, they'll say, well, you know, let's look on parenting strategies and behaviors and stuff like that you know, and, and socialization and so forth. But particularly with learning difficulties, people or parents are constantly told it's too early to tell, which honestly makes me want to scream because none of the peer reviewed research indicates that you're supposed to wait until grade four. In fact, all of the peer reviewed research is screaming not to wait until grade four. It is telling us to get on it early on there's only one state in the U.S. that screens at five and a half years old, all of the kids, and gets on top of it right away. Um, and there's no, no provinces in Canada that do it at all. And I can't tell you how many parents I work with, their child has dyslexia and they don't find out, or they have a different reading disorder and they don't find out till the child's in grade four or five or six. Um, you know, and there's maybe concerns early on, but it's just that practice, practice, practice model, right? Put them in some tutoring and all that type of stuff. So the reason this, as you can tell, <laughs> really frustrates me is number one, we are losing precious time. And I don't want to sound um, hope listen that, you know, if we lose this time, there's nothing we can do. But when we get on an early, there's so much we can do to address it and get over it quickly and get through it. And so forth. The brain is super, super plastic when kids are young, as you know. So we're losing precious time that we sh that there's absolutely no reasons for that to be taking place in the first place. And on top of that, as you all know, because almost every single mom I talk to, when I talk to them on clarity calls, I'll say, what are your top concerns? What are your top two to three concerns? And you know what? One of their top two to con three concerns they always tell me is the impact that this is having on my child's self-confidence, self-esteem, self-worth. They word it in some form or another on that level. Let me know if you can relate to this, right? That's always our concern because we know confidence is key and that that is going to affect so much else in our child's life. So we're losing precious time. Number two is that the reason it drives me nuts is because the research from Harvard and Dr. Sally Shaywich and other research around the world all screams age five and a half we can diagnose dyslexia with 95% accuracy. 
So the long and the short of it is we do not have to wait until a child is drowning in reading or learning in order to determine if they have a learning or reading disability. Furthermore, the same honestly applies with autism and ADHD. We don't need to wait until a child is in grade five and has driven mom and dad absolutely nuts. Mom and dad are on the brink of divorce and, you know, they're tearing apart classrooms and they can't sit still. They can't make any friends. We don't need to wait until the behavior and the family <clears throat> in the classroom or school is it all out crisis to be, you know what, I think something's not right with his behavior or his learning or his, um, you know, his focus or whatever the case may be. So there are very clear signs at a young age. So I can hear you kind of asking, well, then why don't they, you know, why, why do they make us wait if this is so obvious and there's so much research to support it? So I, I hate to say it's political or economical testing costs money. So in most places like Canada, for example, um, you know, testing costs money. So what happens is that they are only going to test the kids who are of gravest concern, number one. And number two, they're not going to do that unless they really, really have to. And typically that's around grade four. And I know a lot of states, it's the same thing. Parents tell me that. And sometimes kids in grade four and parents are just being able to finally fight for a diagnosis and they're still not able to get it because of waiting lists, because there's only, only so many kids who can get tested or get the funding for it per school board or per school. And the other factor is that if your child is just weak, and as you, if you've been following me for a while, you know, I can't stand that term, but if your child is weak, then um, they probably will just slip through the cracks as far as testing from the school system will go, because they're concerned about the child who absolutely can't read a word or who can't, you know, get anything on paper because they have severe dysgraphia or the kid who's tearing apart a classroom because their behavior issues are so bad. They're not, con you know, they're not going to worry about little Sally who can read, but her reading comprehension is really, really poor to them. It's whatever she's getting by, she's getting, you know, C plus whatever it's grade three. But the problem is that as Sally gets into grade seven and eight and even high school, that is not going to fly anymore. She's going to get more and more lost and slip the cracks with her academics. So that is kind of the political slash economical reason why, um, you know, we wait, we wait till kids are practically in a crisis. And my spin or not spin, but take on why, you know, you need to really do whatever you can to get this addressed sooner than later. And the wait and see approach is an absolute, truly, it's an absolute disaster. So, you know, you just don't want to wait till the child is falling further and further behind. And you're having these sleepless nights because you feel like, oh, my goodness, this is getting really bad and so forth. So you're probably thinking, okay, what do I do? You know, contact the school board, complain. You can do all of that stuff. Feel free to take on the school system. Um, but this is the thing. A lot of parents have tried to do that and it can take months to years, and that's going to leave your child um, you know, floundering in the meantime. So you can do that, but in the meantime, make sure you're doing other stuff too. And, you know, I've talked before about the benefits and drawbacks of a diagnosis. So you can determine if you think that's beneficial or not. Um, one thing I will say is screen for the problem, regardless if you decide to get an official diagnosis or not, and you think that's important and there's different drawbacks and, and advantages to that. But either way, you want to screen for the problem and how that's showing up in your child's life on an individual level. So if your child has a dyslexia dys, or diagnosis of dyslexia, okay, fine. But don't just stop there. Go beyond the diagnosis. You need to find out, you need to screen areas of the brain that are weak. Find out the root cause. There are many factors that contribute to learning and behavior breakdown that is biochemical, that is structural in terms of, you know, neurologically, like, you know, left brain de uh, delay, right brain overdevelopment, retained primitive reflexes, poor cerebellum development, gut health, toxicity. I mean, the list goes on and on. So this is basically when you screen for the weak connections and you, you know, then you can start strengthening them. And that is truly where you move beyond just finding out what's wrong and getting a label and how to compensate and all of that stuff. And in instead you move to the world of possibilities that corrects the root cause. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You're instead going to move into the world of possibilities that focuses on corrective approaches and the root cause rather than what's focusing, rather than focusing on what's wrong and how do we compensate and manage this? That is the difference between surviving and thriving. So let me know in the comments below 
Um, what has your experience been with the school system, getting a diagnosis, getting your child the help they need, and maybe maybe your child's homeschooled, and maybe that's a whole other ball, uh, you know, ball game. Because I know that even with the medical system, that can be really hard, especially right now with all the labor shortages and so forth. So if you want to dive deeper and learn more, I'm actually creating a at home learning and behavior screening, because I know there are so many parents that are wondering what the heck is going on and what do I do? So I've created a at home learning and behavior screening, and that is going to help you to understand or find out, first of all, is my child, you know, are they get, or is there some kind of indications that they have some kind of learning, reading, writing, or behavior disorder? And also identifying most importantly, the risk factors. Okay, because we don't want to just look at symptoms like, you know, needs to follow, um, you know, their their reading with their finger or has poor phonemic awareness or something like that. We want to look deeper into did they crawl? Um, did they have a lot of colic, constipation, diarrhea as a baby? Because that's going to affect their gut health. That's going to affect their processing and their brain health. We want to look at their, you know, their early development. Are they clumsy today? Do they have poor coordination? Do they have multiple diagnosis? And we want to see because we want to determine all that because that will help us to be able to connect the dots and find out what's really going on. And that's, you know, where we go from compensation approaches to actual corrective approaches. So that's ultimately the difference between surviving and thriving. So let me know in the comments below what your experience has been, everyone. Um, and if you do want to get your hands on the screening, I'm putting it together and I'm going to be sending it out to anyone um, who wants it. So just in the comments below, write uh, thriving and I will get that to you in the next little while. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Bye.